Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. And today looking forward to doing a full review on the Motorola Focus 71 indoor security camera. I connected with someone from Motorola who sent this to me to review and demo. And I am going to share with you a full review on this video. It will be lengthy, but what I'm gonna do is try and help you in that I'm going to do different sections and I will timestamp those. So if you're looking for something specific, you can also click on the time and it'll take you to that part of the video. And of course you can go through the whole video so you really can get a good feel. Uh, this is my first indoor security camera that of a brand name. I've tried other security cameras and I'll tell you what a difference it really makes when you have a brand name behind you and how uh, you know, the app works and the reliability and a lot goes along with it. When you're investing in a security camera, you want to really make sure it, it works and it works well and it's got good coloring, you can hear and all that good stuff. Now, I will put a link in the description where you could see what other people have to say about it and order it. Appreciate you clicking on the link if you're interested. Also, a thumbs up if you find this video of help and subscribe to my channel and I'll be sure to subscribe back to yours. Um, so as far as the camera, very nice camera. It is not too heavy. Uh, it does have a flexibility. So depending upon the angle of where you're putting it, you can easily adjust and you can actually turn it, you know, 360 degrees. You can, uh, you can really adjust well. So if you really need to get a certain angle and you can even put it on the wall, so you really can adjust there. You've got the speaker on the back. You have your micro SD card there. Uh, doesn't come with a micro SD card, but you can do up to 32 gigabyte micro SD card. You've got your power here. Uh, you've got your power there, power adapter there. Uh, once you power it on, it does take uh, within about 10 minutes uh, for it to connect back. If you do lose power and you need to get back online, it does take about 10 minutes. Uh, it uh, setting up uh, is uh, fairly easy and I'll be showing that to you as well. This is the box that it comes in. Uh, it does highlight uh, several of the capabilities to it. Uh, it does have a really nice 90 degree wide angle, which is key, so you're really getting and covering uh, quite a uh, nice part of the room or most of the room or all the room. And it has two-way communication, so that's nice as well. You've got night vision and it's got the true color for low light and uh, the Wi-Fi, so if the Wi, just, you know, with Wi-Fi and you take advantage of their cloud service, which is affordable, I'll talk about that in a minute, then uh, do keep that in mind that it, it's not going to go to the cloud, you know, storage. So uh, something to uh, think about as well, a secure and private connection. Uh, so again, my video will really be very detailed. So there you go, and then you have the pin if you need to reset that, you've got your start guide your thank you card there. Now, as far as the cloud storage, there um, are, and depending upon the time of the year, they might have a promotion, so you wanna check on that once you get the camera. So I am doing the light plan. The light plan is $2.99 a month or $29.99 a year. It gives you five days of storage history, allows me to do one connect a camera in the smart zone, and then it goes up to, then the next plan is $9.99 a month, and then $14.99 a month, depending upon how many cameras you have. Uh, there are some different options, so you wanna check the plans, uh, but for $2.99 a month, give me some peace of mind. Uh, and what, what's really cool, by the way, as far as the camera, so the other day, uh, I did call maintenance to change the filter, it was actually yesterday, and so I got notified, the camera detected the motion, it went off and they left. So I went in and I noticed my light was left on. So I called the leasing office and I said, um, you know, I don't mean to be spying, but it, my camera notified me that somebody entered the place and I knew they were gonna come and they left my light, they left the light on. And sure enough, uh, she said, hey, you can spy all you want. Um, it's your place and so they went back and turned the light off and otherwise I would have had electricity running all day so these are the kind of things that you could benefit from too and uh, that's what's so great so uh, overall it's been a good experience I think the one part where I found it was extremely sensitive and it was sending me a lot of notifications is with the lighting uh, that was coming in from you know maybe the clouds and and you know getting brighter in the room and less 
uh, bright. And so there you can adjust it. You can, and you'll see, you'll be able to mute the notifications. But my overall experience was a great one. Uh, very, very impressed and very cool to go out of the country and being able to uh, use the app. And the more I got to use the app, the more familiar I really got to take advantage of that. So keep in mind, again, you can use this locally if you don't want to pay for the cloud service. You can use the SD card, micro SD card, or, or take advantage of their little plans, and that, that's a good way to go. It's, it's definitely affordable. Uh, if you're going to invest in an indoor security camera, I, I think that's the way to go. But Anyway, if you're using this camera, Inter Security Camera, I'd love uh, any feedback you have. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer those for you. And I hope this video is informative and will help you make a decision if this will be for you. And I really appreciate to connect with Motorola uh, on this. And I think it's you know nicely made and uh, looking forward to use it. I'm gonna be using it uh, every day and it's nice just to have peace of mind. All right, everybody, enjoy the video, and I look forward to all the likes, the comments, and helping everyone get more secure and more peace of mind in their home. Take care. and I wanted you to see from the option when you don't have the night vision turned on and you have the coloring and this will give you an idea from this part of the review of how well the colors are popping and how well you can see me and obviously hear me. So I hope this part of the video is of help again getting a pretty good idea on the coloring and having it pick up with decent lighting or even lo somewhat low lighting too. Uh, this is not the brightest lighting I have in the room, but it seems to brighten things up and hopefully this will give you an idea as well. It's 5.13 p.m. and I wanted to now share with you the option if you have it in night vision where there's better lighting in the room as well as some lighting outside so you can see how clear it really is and the difference between uh, turning the night vision off and having the night vision turned on. 
Okay, now this is a demo of the camera with the night vision off in the evening at 6.45 p.m. Again, so you can see what it's like without the night vision and hearing me. And now I'm going to go to the door. And now you can hear my voice even as I walk back to the door. And this, again, is with the night vision turned off. Okay, I am doing a test. And this is night vision. It is 6.44 p.m. As you can see, I am sitting here on my couch. I want you to hear the microphone sensitivity. I'm going to stand by the door so you can hear the difference. And now I'm by the door. And this will give you an idea how it sounds and looks in night vision in the evening. So I'm here in Los Cabos, and I wanted to show you how you can access your indoor camera even when you're out of the United States. And I am running off the cell phone service right here at the ocean. It is just beautiful here. So I'm going to go ahead into the app. And there we go. Let's see. It should open up. There we go. And it's connecting. And then it should connect here in a moment. So we're getting pretty good reception. Okay, it's online. Now I'm going to click on motion detected because that's when it detected last and as you can see we're now live and the night vision is on I do have it set up on auto and depending upon how light it is it will adjust so I want to demonstrate to you how the camera can go from this mode where it's not a night vision to night vision and then I'll show you how you can adjust the settings so as you can see you can See color, it's not in night vision. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off. And as soon as I turn these lights off, the night vision should automatically come on. So you'll hear a click with the camera. We are now in night vision mode. So very simple to do. Uh, actually, first, let me turn the lights back on so you can see it will come back on and out of night vision mode. So even with the kitchen lights on, that's still not bright enough for it to take it out of night vision mode. And now I'm going to turn on all the lights and there you go, it's out of night vision. So very simple. Now to change it for the settings, so you go into the settings section and then you go into general settings and you can see night vision, you can have it on auto, on or off. And that's it, very simple to do. And you could see how it adjusts very quickly. Okay, my phone notified me that the security camera went off from motion. So we're going to go ahead and drag the screen down, click on that message, and you could see me there. Now I'm going to play the event. It should pick up my voice see, as well as seeing me. So let's play the event. And there you go. So I was able to hear myself. You could see what I look like. And this will give you a good idea of how well it performs with night vision. As far as motion detection, it can detect two ways. It can detect if you have your smart zone on or off. If it is off, as you can see on the first one, it's going to say motion detected. If you have the smart zone on, it's going to say the motion with the smart zone. So that's the difference of the two. So then you'll know specifically where that area might be coming from. And in my case, I don't need the smart zone on because of the configuration of where the camera is focused. So let's talk about the smart zone. The smart zone is activity detected in the smart zone will appear in your notifications after five to 10 second delay. So I can go ahead and turn on the smart zone and that will also allow you to turn on the enter event and exit event and you could turn those on or off as well. 
but when you turn the smart zone off, it does turn off the enter and exit event. So in this case, I now have the smart zone on. Now if I back out, and now I go into, on the top right hand corner you see there the screen, I'm gonna press that smart zone, and you could see there where I could then adjust that smart zone area. So if I wanted to really just focus in this area here, that's where the smart zone in particular is going to be looking at from your camera of any motion to let you know. And then you could save and exit, you could delete, you could reset and cancel. And so that's a nice feature. So if you've got a pretty big room and different openings, but you have a specific area that you really want to target, that's where the smart zone will work. In my case, I can go ahead and just turn that off and just have the whole camera because that is all I find that I need. So I can go back into the settings and then I can go back into, as we wait, into the, it wasn't the general, it is the sensor settings and then I could turn the smart zone off and keep it that way. But again, you have the option where you could turn it on and you could turn it off. And as you can see, again, there is a slight delay after it detects motion within the smart zone. Now, if you need to zoom in, you can do that. In the part that has the video here of me in the living room, you would just take your fingers and you could pinch on in so you could zoom in and get a close up as you can see, this is as close up as I can zoom this way in vertical. Now, if I were to turn the phone to the side like this, and let me move this over a little bit, and there you go. So this, this will allow you to zoom on in. You just would have to move it over, but you could see clearly uh, you can zoom in, and then you could take a photo, or you could take a an additional video and it's nice to have that feature as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the app. First, I'll do a general overview and then I'll dive deeper and show you some of the capabilities with more detailed information. So when you go in the app, first on the top left-hand corner are the settings. And there you could see you've got account settings, you could change your password, you got your current plan, and then you have your baby settings. So you got your baby services settings, your application settings, the app version, support, privacy, and licenses, and then you could manage your plan. So you've got that there in the settings. And then you've got a little screen there where you have the name of your camera. It shows that I'm online. And then to the right there, you have the three different other setting options where you have camera detail, there's information about your camera, uh, and you've got that information there. You've got sensor settings, so you can see here, you could turn the motion detection on or off. You've got motion sensitivity, motion video recording, so I have it on the cloud, which I'd recommend getting the cloud, and paying for the service, you could save to the SD card, or you could turn that off. You have the smart zone where you could detect a certain area within the camera that that certain area that you wanted to specifically pick up and record and notify you. And then you have your enter event and your exit event where you could turn that on and off in the motion detection, motion detection scheduler where you could then change that and decide so I have currently, I've got it on all the time, and you could have set hours. So if you wanted to change a certain day, like for Fridays, and you wanted to change it from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you could change that in the, the scheduler. Then you have your sound detection, so it picks up sound and the sound sensitivity. So you've got a lot of different options that you could change within the app. Then lastly, you have your general settings, and in there, you could see there if you've got a ceiling mount, you could adjust uh, and turn that on. You can have the night vision, if you want an auto, on or off. You can adjust the brightness and volume. You can adjust the bit rate and the LED flicker. 
whether it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So you can adjust the settings there. Then you have motion detected. So that's where you can now go into the camera. And above that, it shows the card and how much memory is available to store on the micro SD card. And you can store up to 32 gigabyte card on the camera. So now if I click on it, now I can go into my camera. And as you can see, I am streaming live into my camera here from Cabo in Mexico. And you can see it's on night vision. You can turn the sound on or off. So if you wanna hear what is going on in that room, you could turn the settings sound on or off. Then below that, you have your microphone so you could touch, talk, and then you can actually hear when you're standing there in my living room, you can hear right on the speaker of the camera. It's not ultra loud, but you can hear it. So if somebody were to break in or you have your baby in that room, you could talk to the camera that way by pushing to talk. Next up, you have the camera where you can capture an image, you can record a video, and then you've got your gallery. So if I wanted to capture an image, as I have right now, click on capture an image, and it just captured an image. I can also record a video, and I'm recording the video right now, and then I can end that. And then I can go back anytime by pressing the gallery, and there are my, this is the photo I just took. Get back out of that. And that is the video I just took. And these are different examples of some of the photos and videos that I was taking. As you can see, it saves it. This is me standing behind my couch. And this is with the night vision off. And I will show you an example as well here. This is what it looks like with the night vision on. And you can see me on the video there. So you can save it all to your gallery. And let me go back in. And then the last icon here on the bottom right, and that is for the baby options, and I will be showing you that in further detail. And then the event history, you've got the event history. These are the different events that it detects in motion. Now, one of the things that I do find with the camera, it's sensitive to the light. So here is an example at 12.04 p.m. It detected movement from the light. So this is triggered a motion movement and something about the lighting into the living room detected that. So I can go up there now. I could download it. I could delete it. And then if I want, um, download and then it will share and sometimes it just takes a minute for preparing. So sometimes what I found, I had to go back out. And if I click it again, the prepare, you could see then you could just share to a number of different places. So a lot, lot to choose from there. And then I can go back out. Again, you can see here all the motion detected. Now, I can also go to event history and I could, if I am in the app, there is a calendar. You could see we're above the, by the date and you could pick a date. So let's just say Monday, I click okay. And then it shows here what happened on Monday and what triggered the motion. Here's one that I can click into. And this was one, for example, that detected an alarm. So it's a little sensitive, but better be sensitive than, than not. But sometimes um, you, you might have to adjust uh, if you want it, you know, on a higher sensitivity level. Go ahead into the application settings. So in the application settings, there are quite a number of settings. Some I've used, some I haven't. Try and explain those to you, even the ones that I have not. So the first one, do not disturb. I have not been using that but if you choose not to want to be disturbed from getting notifications of an event, you can go ahead and turn it on. 
and then it will tell you uh, for how long. So here in this case, 30 minutes at 11.55, it turns back on, and you could set this up to 24 hours, and it does one hour at a time. And then you can also click until I turn off, or you could just turn off and make it simple. Next one is nice. This is called One Touch Streaming, and it makes it quicker to get into the streaming app. So if I were to normally go into the app, I've got to click on the icon, then go to the screen, and then I can go ahead and stream. Now, if I close it, and now you'll see there's an icon on top, which is the Hubble. Now, if I were to scroll down my screen to the notifications, click that, press play, it should go right. Let me click that back again. So if I go back and press play, it's going straight into the stream. So it saves you one additional step. Now, if I were to you know, close this out, I could turn this off for the moment. And then for some reason, you could just turn it off. I don't know why you would, but you could stop that. So makes it you know, for one less step that you need to do. So that is nice. I'm going to start using that. I hadn't until I started playing with the settings a little bit more. Next up, we have notification settings for sound and vibrate. So if you get a notification, you could get a sound or vibration on your phone. Uh, I've not been using the vibrating feature, but you have that capability. Geofencing. I have not been using the geofencing. I am currently in Cabo here in Mexico. So uh, otherwise it would show on the map my home area, but you could set up the geofencing and it notifies you events, messages went away from your geofence and also uh, when you are inside as well. And you could turn it off as I have it off there. I have not been using that feature, but that is available. And I am not as familiar with that feature, but that is available in Next up, we have notification frequency, so you could set the time intervals of your notification. So you can do anywhere from five minutes to three hours. I have not been using that feature, but that again is available. Rich notification, so we'll turn that off. A rich notification shows you a snapshot of motion detected. So I do keep that on, and I've showed you in the demo of what that looks like when I do get a notification, which I like. Picture-in-picture -picture mode is nice, so if I were to uh, be in the app and I am having the video on, the picture-in-picture -picture here, we're in the video. Now if I want to pl play with my phone and go into another app, this is what picture-in-picture -picture is, so you can still keep your video on your screen. You can turn that off if you want, but that is nice. That is available for the picture-in-picture. -picture. So next up, we have the time format, you got 12 hours or military time, 24 hours. And you got the temperature, whether Fahrenheit or Celsius. Background monitoring, I have not used. I'm not sure what that feature is. Uh, next up, we have remote streaming timeout. Remote streaming times out within 15 minutes uh, if activated. So I have not been really using that and paying that close of attention. But again, some of these features you may never even use, but they're there for those that know about those features and want to take advantage. Night mode, again, another feature I have not used. So you can keep the night mode on continuously, but it seems to drain your battery. Uh, so you can choose if you want to use that and the times that you want that set specifically. So uh, that's kind of good. So. It does switch between both modes, but if you specifically want night mode, you can do that. Next up, we have stay in touch, which if you want to get notified of offers or news from Hubble Connected, you could turn that on and you will be notified there. And the last one is send application log. So my thinking with the send application log is if you're having an issue, you might need to send that information to tech support. Uh, you're having some kind of issue you just send that application log uh, and that would have all the information they need. So those are the different options within application settings.